Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gary with another Fan TV, man. Back at you on this video. Let the content is here. Go smash that like button. Let the content is channel. Go ahead and subscribe, man. Look, so, uh, Ravens Chiefs, Ravens lose a disheartening game yesterday to the Kansas City Chiefs, right? 17 to 10. Um, so, I couldn't do the video yesterday. I wouldn't be able to complete a uh, sentence of complete thought. I'm cool now. We calmed down. Uh, I was probably good probably an hour or two after the game, but just still... Let's just record the video the next day, right? All right, so before I get into the Ravens aspect of it, I do want to talk about two things. One, I had to watch the game on mute after the by, by probably beginning of the third quarter. Tony Romo and his insistence on making everything about Patrick Mahomes was a terrible viewing experience. At one point, I can't remember what he said exactly, but it was along the lines of Lamar Jackson is missing passes because... He knows he's playing against Patrick Mahomes and his legacy is on the line and playing against Mahomes is having an effect on him. Once he said that, I muted the TV. I, 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 I couldn't do it anymore. I've never, ever watched a game on mute. I had to watch this game on mute, the rest of the game on mute, second half. I had to. It was too bad. Second thing, now about the Chiefs. Speaking of Patrick Mahomes, great game, great player. He did his thing out there. Uh, he's a dog, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> Ravens fans, y'all said, said y'all wanted Patrick Mahomes. Y'all wanted the Chiefs. This, this, this is what y'all wanted. He, he, and, he, and he gave it out, right? Me personally, that's why I said I wanted Buffalo. Josh Allen would have been good for turnover where he plays up and down the game. And also that Bill defense is injured. You know what I mean? Patrick Mahomes, another Super Bowl appearance. Good for him. Uh, last thing about the Chiefs. Travis Kelsey... Um, I try to keep it engraving on here, you know, team keep it clean, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to curse, right? But Travis Kelsey was acting like a female dog the entire game, all right? Um, if you get it, you get it, okay? Uh, I was not a fan of how he was acting. Starting drama, pushing players after the play, he blocking Kyle Hamilton, pushes him after the play, and then wants to get into a tussle like Kyle Hamilton was wrong for getting his hands off him, all right? Walks up to Roquan Smith, holds Roquan, then, um... Kyle Van Noy steps in for his teammate. Guess who gets the flag? The Ravens, right? Uh, still taunting, talking after every play, right? Referees will do anything about it. Zay Fly was taunts one time. Pen uh, penalty, right? I was not... Listen, Travis Coase is a great player. He's an all-timer. He's maybe the best receiving tight end of all time. Him and Gronkowski, right? They're, they're up there, okay? The way he acted in this game, I hate it from start to finish, right? And maybe it's being a Ravens fan. I don't know, but... I can't imagine anybody, non-Chiefs, watch this game and, and appreciate how Jarvis Kelsey went out of, went, went about it out there. Anyway, that's the last thing about the Chiefs. Now, about the Ravens, okay? Um, Start with a very, very small bit of good. The defense showed out from the second. Well, I would really say the defense showed out middle of the second quarter to the rest of the game, right? The Chiefs ran out 14 points. They get the three points at the end of the half, whatever, right? But really... Midway second quarter, the Ravens defense made everything hard for the Chiefs, right? Um, Kyle Hamilton was the best player on the field for the Ravens, offense or defense. Kyle Hamilton was the best player out there, okay? And um, I put it on Twitter when I, when I was typing that. Kyle Hamilton is this defense's MVP, all right? Um, the way they use him, the way he can go about just being everywhere on the field, right? If there was a big play made, more than likely, it involved Kyle Hamilton in some form or fashion, all right? Um, so the very, very small positive I can bring from that game is that the defense did their job. They held Kansas City to 17 points. They had Kansas City to zero points in the second half, all right? Now, Kansas City was killing clock. They, they didn't like they were trying to score. Uh, of course, they were trying to score. Let me, let me rephrase it. They didn't like they were, they were playing it safe. Let's put it like that. Second half, they played it safe, right? If the Ravens would have turned up on offense, I'm sure Kansas City would have opened, up, would have opened it up more. The Ravens didn't do that, so Kansas City is like, well, I put the ball in harm's way. We'll just kill the clock. We'll keep the clock moving, right? That seemed to be Casey's motive. That doesn't say anything from the Ravens did. The Ravens still have to stop them. The Ravens stopped them, right? So they did their thing, all right? So that small bit of good, I'll take uh, that's That's the good right there, all right? Now, for this game on the offensive side of the football, um, very, very disappointing, right? So, oh, wait, wait, before we get to offensive side of football, let's talk about this as well. The Ravens this year have been a physical, tough, disciplined football team, right? This game, they were physical and tough, but extremely undisciplined, right? 
They waited to the biggest game of the year to be played their most undisciplined football, especially emotionally. I just went on talking about Travis Kelsey, right? You know he's trying to agitate you. The Ravens fell for the trap far too many times. Too many penalties, too much taunting, too much everything. They looked like a poorly coached football team today. I mean, well, yesterday, as I'm you know, talking about this game. They looked like a, co- a, a poorly coached football team, all right? Entirely too many after the whistle penalties, okay, that ended up killing them. All right, Kansas City has been to six straight AFC championship games. They're not going to be the ones to make the constant mistakes, even though Trey Smith helped the Ravens out multiple times with his mistakes. But generally, they're not going to be the one that makes the constant mistakes. You cannot play that brand of football, that undisciplined brand of football, versus a team like this in this high stake of a game. The Ravens, like I said, went into the biggest game of the year to play their most undisciplined football, and that's probably the that's probably the most disappointing thing of this game, even outside of the offensive performance. Like, you waited until this game to look like this team. Extremely disappointing right there. Now, offense. We got to talk about offense from a, from, from a multitude of layers, right? Let's talk about that, once again, the moment looked too big for this entire team. For this entire offense. The moment looked too big. Hell, for the entire team, really, honestly. The first quarter, the defense looked shell-shocked. All right? They didn't, it, looked like they didn't, it looked like, you remember the Rams game and how the Rams were just going up and down to start off? It looked like that. Then the defense clamped up, okay? The offense never had their bounce-back moment. They looked shocked the entire game, all right? Um, I will say this. They looked panicked from the moment the Chiefs went up 14-7 to and they had the strip sack, right? The Ravens looked panicked out there, okay? They looked like I had flashbacks to 2019 where the Ravens got down and all of a sudden they forgot that, hey, look, even though you're down, you can still run the football. Like, you're down one touchdown. Why are we going all out aerial attack? Why? Why are we doing that, all right? This game, Gus Edwards finishes the game with three carries for 20 yards. Amari Jackson had the most rushing tips on the team and he had eight, okay? All right, so unacceptable right there, flat out. Unacceptable not to run football. I watched the San Francisco 49ers be down 24-7 to versus the Detroit Lions at halftime. They were down three scores, and guess what they did to come out the second half? They ran the football, got their play-action game going, and then they chomped away at it. Now, the Lions helped them out not taking field goals. They got too aggressive. We're not talking about that game. But at the end of the day, Todd Munkin, John Harbaugh, they panicked. John Harbaugh talks all this stuff about establishing the run, right? The one game you actually needed to establish the run, they chose not to do it. And listen, I love what Justice Hill did this year. Justice Hill was probably one of the most underrated Ravens this season, right? Whenever his number was called, he stepped up and did his job pretty much effectively, right? Early in the season, he had some fumble issues, but for the most part, he did his job well, okay? There was far too much Justice Hill in this game. This game with Chris Jones in the middle, with with the Chiefs play a big physical defensive line. You needed a power back like Gus Edwards. Hell, Dalvin Cook's not a power back, but he's bigger than Justice Hill. Why did we sign Dalvin Cook? He didn't play. Okay? Gus Edwards needed more than three carries. Gus Edwards could have had three carries in the first two drives of the game. The Ravens started this game off, ran the ball, Justice Hill off the right side, got one yard, and then abandoned the run game. That was it. That was, that was pretty much it. Gus Edwards had one carry for 15 yards in the first half. Uh, you know, he broke off the right side. Great run. They tried once again in the second half. They said, okay, we're going to establish one. They ran the ball with Gus Edwards two times and said, okay, look, that's it. Why? Another thing, and this is something I've had a problem with from really a, a lot of the season, is that Lamar Jackson needs to be under center more. He needs to be under center more. It's too much shotgun. It's too much. Under center, you can have a more diverse running game. You can do more things. Then also, the play-action game is better. Lamar Jackson can do it under center, but for some reason, the Ravens just don't. It doesn't matter who the OC is. It's either Greg Roman in pistol or Ty Munkin in shotgun. They just don't go under center enough. You look at some of the best offenses in the around, around the NFL. They play under center, okay? They do it, all right? Lions, 49ers, Dolphins, Rams. All these teams have an under center component to their offense. The Ravens just completely forget about it. If you're going to be in shotgun, as much as the Ravens are in shotgun, you need to run the read option more. 
at, at the very least. And they don't do that enough, right? So if we're going to cut out Lamar Jackson's running, right, why would you be in shotgun and just to not run the read option at all? It, it just doesn't make sense, right? Second week in a row where the game plan for the first half didn't make sense. The game plan for the entire game didn't make sense, okay? The Ravens, the Chiefs, and the 49ers, sorry, 49 the Chiefs and the Texas defense are very, very different, okay? But Domingo Ryan is coming from the same tree, all right? Domingo Ryan's blitzed more than he ever blitzed in his entire coaching career versus the Ravens, right, in the Texas game. Um, uh, Spagnolo, he sends simulators kind of like McDonald, too high, you know, try to confuse, try to money up the look, right? He does that. The Ravens were not prepared for it. The Ravens had no quick passing game. If you watch the Chiefs, if you watch my game preview, okay, the, what the Chiefs did on offense was my exact game plan for the Ravens, all right? Control the clock, right? Sorry, excuse me. Control the clock, okay? That doesn't mean you got to run for all day, but establish the run. Control the clock, all right? Let, let's, let's see how many runs. Isaiah Pacheco had 24 carries for, t for 68 yards. He had 2.8 yards of carry, but they tried to run the football. And Mahomes still got off 39 passes. Still got off 39 passes. So, the Chiefs controlled time of possession. They controlled the clock, which I wanted the Ravens to do. They also had a quick and effective passing game with, a, with good spacing. You could watch my game preview. This is literally what I said the Ravens to do on offense. The Chiefs ran the exact game plan, right? When you come into these high leverage games, you cannot try to force the ball down the field. Listen, Lamar Jackson standing back there is great, right? But at the end of the day, the Ravens have two good offensive linemen. Two of them, all right? That is Zeitler, that is Linderbaum. Everybody else is below average or bad. Morgan Moses cannot handle speed off the edge. He just can't handle it. Game one of the season, Will Anderson got after him. Texas game, Will Anderson got after him again. This game, Joy Karloffis got around him. Ronnie Stanley, due to the, the, excuse me, the multiple knee injuries, is not the same player, all right? Ronnie Stanley is not the same player. The strip sack is entirely on Ronnie Stanley. That is not Lamar. Lamar Jackson can be blamed for a lot in this game. And we'll get to Lamar Jackson. But the strip sack, not his fault. That's coming off in the blind side. They're trying to run a shot play. The shot play looked to be open. And as Lamar Jackson's releasing it, Ronnie Stanley's is be completely strip sack. Okay? And John Simpson, the Chiefs went after him. They lined up Chris Jones over John Simpson and said, go to work. And Chris Jones went to work. John Simpson is just simply... We knew this going into the season that the guard, that left guard was going to be the weak spot. We knew that. And he was. All right. So get bad game plan for Tom Munkin. Too, too many deep drops. Too much time forced the ball down the field. All right. Now, for the two guys that were the two Ra the Ravens' best two offensive players, I mean, disappointed in how they played. All right. Zay Flowers, rookie, did his thing. All right. I, I, really, I didn't mind the taunting. Sneed was holding on to his leg. Get off me. Push him down. All right. Cool. Spend the ball on him. But as, like I said, everything Travis Kelsey was getting away with, I really didn't have that much of a problem with what Zay Flowers did. That's just me. But the diving at the one is inexcusable. It was first and second down. You were literally going to get the first down. Hell, if you just lower your shoulder and duck in, you probably score. But he's a rookie, right? He's the only he's one of the guys that showed up, so I'm not gonna be too upset with him. But that play changed the entire game. I mean, it was it's 14, it's like 13, 14 minutes left in the fourth quarter. Ravens will be in the game 17, 14. That changed the entire game. All right. Lamar Jackson. So Lamar Jackson um did not play well. All right. This is why when He's going to win the MVP, and he should win the MVP. Let's start there. But this is why when he's been called the best quarterback in the league, I'm always I'm always hesitant on it. I always say, look, man, Mahomes is in there, right? Um, Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the NFL, all right? Lamar and Josh Allen are fighting for two. And until they can overcome the hill that is Patrick Mahomes, that is the Chiefs, that's just what it's going to be. They're fighting for two, Okay. Is Lamar Jackson still a great player? Yes. Is he still one of the one of the best players in Ravens franchise history? One of the best players in the NFL? Yes, of course, of course, of course. This game did not shine a bright light on him. All right. Every time that Lamar Jackson gets into a high pressure situation, this is my personal opinion. He lets his emotions control his play. All right. I love the fact that Lamar Jackson is emotional. That he that I know I'm talking about. I know I get it. 
that he is emotional. He loves the game. He 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 wants to be great. I love him. He is great, and he strives for that every single game. I love it. But in these high pressure games, you need to be calm. And when the Ravens get down, when things don't go his way in high pressure games, he loses his cool. And I saw him all that and lose his cool and affect his play. If you don't think that throwing that pass and interception into triple coverage to Isaiah Likely wasn't Lamar Jackson losing his cool, I don't know what to say to you. He lost his head on that play, right? And that happens far too often to Lamar in high-pressure games. He loses his head. We got to be honest about it, right? Until he can learn to control that emotion when it's a high-leverage moment, this stuff is going to continue to happen. Right. And I'm not blaming the game on him because I went down the whole list. Right. John Harbaugh's included. You're the head coach. Tell your OC to run the football more. You can do that. Tell him to tell his ass to run the ball more. But we were talking about Lamar Jackson here. At this point in the game, at that point in the game for the entire game. Right. He the old Lamar came back. And this is what I mean. He tried to make Superman plays. When playing simple, effective football can do the same thing, right? Now, it didn't cost them, but in the fourth quarter, right, it was third and one. The Ravens rock, probably should have ran QB draw inside zone, said they dropped back with Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson, instead of throwing the football away, runs around and takes a sack. Now, I only made it fourth and three, and the Ravens ended up converting that fourth down. But right there, hero ball kind of play. Uh, early in the fourth quarter, the Ravens are at like the 38, maybe the maybe 40-yard line, right? It's, a, it's a close enough for Tucker to get a field goal. Lamar Jackson, the, the Chiefs are showing heavy press. They're showing zero, right? Lamar Jackson, instead of getting the ball off quick or calling the hot or throwing it to his hot, he takes the sack, knocks the Ravens out of field goal range. These are the kind of plays you can't make in high leverage games, right? Hear what I'm saying to you. I'm not telling you Lamar Jackson is a bad player. I'm not telling you that he's not the quarterback to lead the Ravens to the Super Bowl. I'm not telling you that. I'm telling you that when it comes to high pressure moments, he needs to keep his cool. He needs to calm down. Right? It's okay being emotional. It's okay being emotional. But you know, have to know how to regulate your emotions. And I've watched, we have watched Lamar Jackson far too long in these big leverage games not be able to control his emotions. All right? That's what I'm saying. If y'all don't think that's fair, then that's okay, man. I'm not, you know, it is what it is. But I love Lamar Jackson. He's the best quarterback I've ever seen put on a Ravens uniform. All right? Um, but if I can't be honest, then I can't. I can't do. I can't do the the, the channel. You know what I mean? So, um, the Ravens end this season in a very very disappointing fashion. If the offense would have showed up and the defense played how they played, the Ravens win this game easily, right? 17-14, 14 minutes left in the fourth quarter. The Ravens are actually pulling the momentum back a little bit. It's a different ball game. But the Ravens constantly in these big games shoot themselves in the foot. They play against themselves and the opponent sometimes referees as well but for the morning part they play against themselves they play against the opponent it's hard to beat multiple people at the same time it's difficult all right and this video is longer than it's like 18 minutes that's longer than any you know review that i usually do for a game but when the when season ends the way it ended it it, it takes this kind of re review to really talk about it all right so um that's my thoughts on the game right offensively it was a failure from top to bottom um, game plan was a failure from top to bottom. Coaching was a failure from top to bottom. Um, and the Ravens, which I probably feel like was the best team in Ravens history, when you say this offense and with that defense, um, don't even make it a Super Bowl. So, um, disappointed. But, um, yep, that's my thoughts on the man. But it's Gabriel, it's my fan TV. I'm out.